What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So this will be a spoiler free review for Blumhouse's upcoming Five Nights at Freddy's movie, which is dropping tonight, tomorrow by the time you are hearing this review because the embargo has lifted. But again, this will be spoiler free. This movie has been in development hell or been in development, I think, since 2015. I think that's the first time I recall hearing anything about it. Uh, this film is directed and co-written by Emma Tammy, also written by Scott Cawthon and Seth Kudbeck. It is starring Josh Hutcherson, Elizabeth Lale, Piper Rubio, Mary Stewart, Masterson, and Matthew Lillard, and a few other individuals. So, Mike Schmidt, a troubled security guard, accepts a nighttime job at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, a once successful but now abandoned family entertainment center, where he discovers its four animatronic mascots, Freddy Fazbear, or Fazbear, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy, move and kill anyone that is still there after midnight now admittedly i side-eyed or began to side-eye this movie's quality once that for the fans featurette came out yesterday or two days ago at this point because to me that just screamed hey we did our best we even had scott the game creator but this product still turned out shaky after years of development but a lot of you won't care about our shortcomings that's what i got from that featurette and it came off like an attempt to acknowledge the section of fans who don't know how to criticize films so they know they'll eat it up anyway the creative team knows that very well even i think some fans aren't going to really dig the lore changing or the inac inaccuracies depending on how you take this all in five nights at freddy's i guess you could say succeeds at being a film for the fans but even that's limited to just easter eggs impeccable animatronics the more than stellar set design and a few other aspects sadly a highlight reel of why the franchise is loved is not all that matters when putting together a movie and that's where five nights at freddy's has fallen short it's just coasting on nostalgia with very little reason to engage in its story or characters casual fans like me and diehard fans will know this lore quite well or at least be familiar with it but this jump to a live action film is mostly a misfire thanks to our screenplay mike vanessa garrett abby max an insufferable aunt and every other character are just so underdeveloped or unlikable and underdeveloped all at once and for this film, you have several unlikable characters, so strap in. Mike is struggling to support him and his sister, which which has his custody of her in jeopardy. Uh, but Mike is also riddled with guilt over a tragedy that happened when he was just 12 years old. A tragedy that the film just constantly slaps you over the head with over and over and over and over and over again. It even goes as far to plug in exposition dumping just in case you were too stupid to, ca to catch on to what happened when Mike was 12. Not, not as if they didn't tell you that visually more than enough times. I found myself progressively just becoming disconnected from Mike the more that went on, despite his situation evoking sympathy for me early on. But that's not to say that everything about Mike was worth investing either because it sadly just wasn't mike's little sister abby who he is about to again lose custody to their relationship is poorly sold there's little to latch onto with their almost non-existent bond and it doesn't help when abby is written as one of the most baffling characters in the film yes she's a child i get that and i also don't believe she's really a part of the overall lore i think she's just a brand new character but those of you who watch my channel know a thing or two about a, a man or a used to be child named Andy Barkley and the Child's Play franchise. I do not recall Andy being such an insufferable child. So it's possible to not do what Five Nights at Freddy's does with child characters. How Abby is written creates a rift in caring about her custody with Mike or any of the, any of the more tense situations she finds her finds herself in as the film progresses so this just leaves you with nothing to really latch onto with the central characters the writers really don't even try to let their story be shocking in any regard because a lot of your suspicions early on are just proven true by the film's finale and while sensible and logical the journey is not keeping you curious because the mystery is slowly solved for any attentive viewer before we reach the finale you already know what's going on and then you spend the rest of the runtime waiting for the inevitable inevitable to be confirmed and you're just waiting for the characters to catch up with you the screenplay just makes it far too easy for you as a viewer to put the puzzle together which results in five nights at freddy's being a chore to sit through because i'm 10 miles ahead of all the characters every time 
the jump scares are solid and in line with the gaming experience but are a bit annoying since you're enduring a film that never really earns those scares and then when something isn't jumping at you scares are hard to come by there's no successful tension building due to its handling of the characters as i mentioned and any chance to be scary is short-lived in favor of more jokes five nights at freddy's screenplay is mostly a joke fest that doesn't ever land and then the dialogue is also very rough and questionable i found myself going most people do not talk or engage like this with a lot of the lines that were being delivered the questionable part being from a cop who says if you do xyz again i'm going to shoot you like why are you as a cop even uttering such a line joke or not <laughs> the handling of the lore is not done in a coherent fashion i would say again lots of people like me know what's going on without watching this film but five nights at freddy's just exposition dumps a lot of what's happening at once or sprinkles it throughout the film sometimes and i'm sure some viewers are going to have questions about what's being disclosed and portrayed on screen but let's wait for a sequel to explain it all better i guess however certain parts of the lore just shouldn't have been dumped like this in one movie freddy chica Foxy and Bonnie have very little screen presence and I do mean they just feel like afterthoughts used to put butts in seats. Obviously humans have to carry the film but these human characters are poorly written so the animatronics not getting a spotlight becomes a very noticeable poor choice. Nothing about them is even remotely intimidating either. Performances range from decent to lifeless and Matthew Lillard who was just simply terrible to be quite honest and I say that with immense disappointment because I do not think Lillard is a terrible actor. It probably just speaks to how poorly directed the film can be at times. Joss Hutcherson at least captures Mike's grief, regret, and frustration well enough, but sometimes his delivery was awful. Elizabeth Leo was decent, but very underwhelming, underwhelming performance overall. So underwhelming that a moment which should be sad just kind of comes and goes. Five Nights at Freddy's has a sluggish pace also that just weighs on you, and it's not even that long of a movie. Certain scenes definitely go on way too long. Some are intended to get us to trust certain characters, but the poor screenplay has already shown me not to trust or like anyone, so the scene that I'm referencing just overstays its welcome. The cinematography is one of the better aspects of the film, as is the score from the Newton Brothers. This movie is not a film that I liked, and even if I did like it, it's just not one of those bad movies that are enjoyable. It's just bad. It's honestly, I'm quite shocked how this is worse than The Nun 2, and the extra disbeliever i'm gonna give this a three out of ten guys i'm being quite honest let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification you never miss a video in the description i'll have links to my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video